She averaged 16 and a half points per game in her senior season. She led the Lady Vols to another Sweet 16 appearance. She was named by the AP SEC Player of the Year and also by the AP SEC First Team. She will finish her Lady Vol career with over 2,000 points, only the fifth Lady Vol to accomplish that feat. She is now drafted by the WNBA's New York Liberty. We have Megan Simmons with us today. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm doing fantastic. And when you hear those those feats and those accomplishments and now you're in the WNBA, what do you feel? Um, I just feel accomplished. So I definitely feel um, a very empowered, empowered woman to be able to do the things that I did, you know, on the on the court as well as off the court, is getting a degree and uh, being able to make my dreams come true at the pro level. Now, guys, we know you wanted to hear about how draft night was for and all of those things. We're going to actually wait and talk about that at the end of the interview. We want to actually get and get Megan stuck on some of the things that went on this season as her last season as a lady ball. Now, when you say you've accomplished a lot of things here, who do you most attribute that success to and those accomplishments? Um, definitely my father. Um, he was definitely very hard on me um, early on from the age of six to, um, you know, till now. He's still hard on me to this day. So um, I think he really just pushed me hard. He wanted me to be successful. Mm -hmm. um, he knew that I had a gift, and he wanted me to just use my gift as much as I could in the best way possible. Um, and if I had a dream, to always keep my mind on it and continue to work hard. Was it? Let's go get shots up in the gym. You had a, a court at your house or what? And just a lot of practice? A lot of practice getting in random high school gyms, mm -hmm. um, practicing with a lot of older girls. Mm -hmm. um, and I have four brothers. So mm -hmm. um, being outside, you know, on the go, you know, playing barefoot, you know, mm -hmm. in the street and everything. Things like that is what really, you know, motivated me to continue to play basketball. And your brothers, was it? Competing against them one on one, or were they hard on you? We would play twenty one, mm -hmm. or we would play one on one as much as we could. But my brothers really pushed me. I mean, they were very physical with me, so it kind of helped me uh, build that physicality in my game today. Now you had a lot of things go on during your four years as a lady ball. Um, when Pat Summit, um, obviously the one who recruited you here and got you here, when she, when you found out she wouldn't be the head coach of the balls anymore, and Coach Wood was going to take over. How impactful was that on you as a player and as a person? I mean, you know, in a situation like that, you expect, you know, to play with a coach for four years. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I wasn't expecting anything too difficult. Um, I knew um, at any point in time anything could happen. And when she stepped down, um, it was very emotional for me because she was she was my rock. She was she was more than more than anything, any and everything to me. Um, she was like my second mom. Mm -hmm. And um, to lose her is very emotional. But she always told me that if anything happened, that I was going to continue to play hard and continue to give my 110 percent for the lady all family and I think that's what I could continue to do and um, I just use my use that as a motivation to take my game to the next level. Do you see any similar styles between her and Coach Worley? Uh, I think Pat was a little bit more uh, more of a go-getter mm -hmm. type. Um, Holly, she's not too relaxed but she has that because she, because she was a player under mm -hmm. Pat. She's able to how can I say it, um, agree with us a little bit more on how we feel, how our bodies feel, where our minds are um, and I think that's the biggest difference is just from the player's perspective and then Pat just, you know, being able to just be a coach as well. Now, you've been one of the top players and one of the top names on campus for a little while now. Does that add pressure? How is that? I mean, it's, it's very humbling. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm not a very cocky person, mm -hmm. um, but I, um, I can be very confident in myself. And uh, I think it's just a matter of just remaining humble and... Um, never taking anything for granted. I mean, I could be a big name. You know, people can say I'm a superstar. I can say whatever. But at the end of the day, I'm just a normal human being who just happens to be good at basketball. Now, you spoke a little bit about being so humble. You're one of the most humble people I've seen off the court, even doing this interview with us today. is very humble. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, how are you able to maintain that? Though? It's hard. you got to be hard being so known and so respected around the SEC and the, the college community. How hard is that? I mean, it, for me, the kind of person I am, I love people. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't shy away from anybody who um, is grateful for my gift and grateful for the person that I am. So um, I, it's, it's, it can be difficult at times because sometimes you know, when you do well, you want everybody to know. But at the same time, not everybody should know what you're doing because not many people will accept that. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's just a, that's that part right there allows me to continue to keep myself humble and to continue to work hard and make people, not more people to talk about me, but make people realize that I do have a gift and respect the gift and not just me as a person. Okay, now we spoke to your level of humbility. 
Now, this passion is another trait that you're known for. Where does this come from, this passion that you have for the game of basketball? Um, I think, you know, starting at a young age, I mean, you try to find, you know, what sport you want to mm-hmm. play. You want to find um, some things that, you, that you're that you going to love later on in life. And basketball was just one of those things. Mm-hmm. And um, I just love being physical. I love um, the intensity of the game. I love the adrenaline that I get before a game. Mm-hmm. And it, I think that builds that passion, that adrenaline and knowing that, um, I can be great at the game of basketball. I want to be even greater. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it, it can be, it can be hard at times. Sometimes to not be so passionate, but I just love being passionate. It shows people that I'm um, using the gift to the best of my ability and not taking it for granted. Now, a question people want to know: Are you this passionate off the court? Is it competitive when you're going to get something to eat or running? <laughs> Is it this passionate off the court as well? I mean, when it comes to other things like bowling and mm-hmm. it's another sport, you know, it can be very competitive. Oh. Um, but when it comes to deciding to eat and things like that, no, I just make a decision and and go with it. I would not be the one bowling against you or playing against you in any sports. Now, let's talk about the Lady Vols in your season. You had um, when they decided to move you to the two guard position. Was that something you were willing to do, or did you at first have a couple thoughts about it or second concerns? I mean, point guard position is not my mm. it's not my forte. Um, but the two guard is something that I played all through high school. Mm. It was a position that I played in AAU basketball. Um, but when they moved me to the two, I was I could take a deep breath. I was able to um, I was able to go back to my forte. Mm. And when Pat moved me back, and when Holly, you know, kind of made that adjustment to let the ball come through me, um, it was a little bit easier for me. And I was I was very very happy with that. I was happy with the adjustment. Um, so I was really really excited about being moved back to the two. And you're speaking to your natural ability to score. How natural is scoring for you? Um, it it can be. I mean, I wouldn't say it's it's really natural, but mm-hmm. it is a gift that I have is mm-hmm. to have the ability to score, to use my speed mm-hmm. to my advantage. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's hard work. I mean, because you have some defenders who are all up in your grill mm-hmm. and they're, you know, trying to make sure that you don't score, but it's it's just something that pushes me even harder to, to work ten times harder just to be able to put the ball in the basket. If you if one possession you come down and you might miss a shot or make a bad play, how confident the next play down that you're going to make the right play and make a shot? Well, in that moment, I mean, if I miss a shot, I mean, I'm going to get frustrated because mm-hmm. if it's a shot that I normally hit, mm-hmm. it's something that I'm really going to be frustrated about. So I may lose my confidence a little bit for the next play, but then at the same time, I know I have to move on mm-hmm. and um, I have to just continue to play and let the game come to me. Now, we're going to ask you on an NBA or WNBA level, who does your game resemble to you? Um, I would definitely say Kobe Bryant. Mm-hmm. I, I would because his of his scoring ability and um, just being able to have that just the tenacious attitude, mm-hmm. the very passionate attitude of getting the ball in the basket and finding ways to score. So that's who I definitely would compare my game to. I, well, I guess we can all see that coming with the passion that you both present on the court. Um, have you had anybody reach out on the NBA or WNBA level and tell you to keep going? Um, Tamika Kendrick. Mm-hmm. She has she has definitely been an asset to me and taking me under her wing and um, has really motivated me to continue working hard. Uh, when I did get drafted, she told me um, to go out there and work as hard as I can, mm-hmm. uh, make the team and make her proud and make the Tennessee Lady Ball family proud as well. Have you had any time to reflect on the season? Um, I have. I mean, it's a lot to grasp. It's, it's, it's a lot to, to think that, you know, the season is over. My time at the University of Tennessee is coming to an end. But um, I've enjoyed I've enjoyed the journey as long as I've been here. Now, you did go out with a bang. You had a brilliant uh, last game in Sweet 16. Was it self-satisfacting knowing you went out with a bang and scored those points that you did and almost led the team to a victory? I mean, it was never. I was never satisfied. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just the kind of person that you can never be – I never wanted to be content with where I was at. I mm-hmm. always wanted to um, continue to work even even harder because um, I don't think I've reached my fullest potential yet. I still, I still haven't, and I still got a lot of work to do, and um, hopefully um, taking it to the next level, I'll be able to do that. Now, what is the state of the Lady Balls with losing you, obviously, being one of the emotional leaders and scoring leaders and playmakers on the court? What's the state of the Lady Balls next season going forward? Um, I think they're going to be they're going to have a good team. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the mentality has to be is to work ten times harder mm-hmm. to learn from the lessons that we you know that we've had in the last game and the years before. Um, and always just to remain close. I mean, for them, this year we were so close. We were mm-hmm. so much closer than any other year that I've been here. Um, but next year they're going to have more more freshmen coming in, mm-hmm. so they're going to need to help them get into the flow early. So then by the time preseason comes, mm-hmm. everything else will fall into place. But I think they have a good chance of going really far next year. And you'll still be around, right? I'll still be around as long as, you know, if I'm overseas, then maybe not. But mm-hmm. other than that, yeah, I would definitely be around.
Now, what will you miss most about being a volunteer in a lady ball? Uh, tradition, mm -hmm. definitely tradition. Um, somewhat being spoiled mm -hmm. uh, when we travel, uh, um, and just being well taken care of, um, and what they do for us as women, mm -hmm. and not just as basketball players. I mean, they helped us so much off the floor with academics and building our character and getting us out in the community mm -hmm. and showing everybody, you know, their dreams do come true. And um, just being able to build our brand, you know, as a as a woman, especially when you want to go to the next level. Was tradition um, a role that? played a factor when you decided to come to UT? Or? Most definitely, mm -hmm. most definitely. Um, I definitely wanted to go to a school that, that was very welcoming, mm -hmm. that was somewhat in a homely fashion. Um, uh, everybody was a family, mm -hmm. and this, this team, when I came on my visit, was definitely a family, and it's something that I definitely wanted. Megan, out of all the moments you had at Tennessee, what was your biggest moment? Uh, I would definitely, I would definitely say um, winning the regular season in the SEC championship my mm -hmm. freshman year. Um, because as a freshman, you know, you don't expect to come in and just play as much as I did. Mm -hmm. And um, with Pat believing in me as much as she did, it, it built that extra confidence in me. And just for us to win those championships, it, it, it just it just built my fire a little bit more because I was more hungry. I wanted more and um, just just that just that at that time was an amazing film. Well, I don't want to project things or anything like that, but in the future, after your career is over in basketball, is there any chance we might get a Megan Simmons coaching? Is I, that possible? Yeah, there's a possibility. I mean, I, I love, you know, kids. I love the game of basketball, and mm -hmm. it's something that I really want to do uh, later on and being able to motivate people mm -hmm. as much as other people have motivated me to continue to play the game of basketball and keep women's basketball alive. Mm -hmm. You know, don't let it die out um but there's so many women out there who want to achieve their goals and i think basketball is a good way to do it now i believe it was texas a&m we've seen you nay nay we've seen you do a lot of dances since you've been on campus what is going to be megan simmons top dance that she does in the future or the top dance right now for you that that would be the nay nay the nay nay it, it definitely would be and i don't i I really don't even know. I think it was just early in the season where Izzy was supposed to be in the middle. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, you know, it's not me. It's not me, you know. And I'm not the kind of person to be that way. Mm -hmm. But at that time, you know, like you said, I'm so passionate. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I felt like, you know, that would be a new thing to get everybody everybody pumped up and bring that passion as well. If you haven't seen this dance, you might want to go see it. It was pretty passionate. <laughs> um, now we're going to talk about the future for Megan Simmons. The WNBA draft. Can you explain that experience for us a little bit, the whole weekend leading up to the draft? It was, I, I can't even, it's, you can't even, I can't even describe it mm -hmm. to you. Um, it was so in informative. Mm -hmm. There were so many different things that I didn't know about the WNBA itself. Mm -hmm. um, because as a little girl, you just have this dream about getting there. And when you figure out the ins and outs of the WNBA, the business side, um, the benefits and, and things like that, it makes, it opens your eyes a lot more. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was very, we had a couple of motivational speakers um, that came in. It was very empowering for so many people to come in and speak to us mm -hmm. and, and tell us, you know, as long as you continue to be you and be confident in you, you'll be successful. In, in the WNBA business, mm -hmm. not just in basketball, but as a woman uh, off the floor with the community service that they do as well. So it was just, it was an amazing, amazing experience. Did you look at draft boards much going into the draft? Is that something you want to stay away from, seeing the projections of where you'll go? I really didn't pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just felt, you know, at that moment, I was just happy to be invited. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's, that could be anybody's dream is to be there. And um, I didn't expect the worst. I didn't expect the best. All I expected was um, what God's plan was. And um, I could just, you know, le left it in his hands and um, let him control that because I couldn't control that. Megan, what, what are the New York Liberty getting? What are they getting out of you? Um, my scoring ability, mm -hmm. um, my passion, a lot of energy. Um, I'm an energy energy bunny, so um, at any point in time, you know, I could just pop off and score, and I, some people may not even expect it. Mm -hmm. um, and just adding the extra scoring ability with Cap, along with Capricorn Dexter mm -hmm. and uh, Kamiko, um, who used to be my former teammate. So mm -hmm. I'm really excited. I'm really excited to see what Coach Lambier has expected for me. Have you had a chance to talk to Kamiko with you guys being former teammates? Have you had a chance to communicate with her at all? Um, just for a little bit. Um, not too much about mm -hmm. the team, but um, just getting prepared. And um, that was really, really it. I'm pretty sure Tina Charles being in the middle now, is that going to 
<laughs> that kind of brightens you up knowing that you have somebody that can get you the ball and maybe open it up for you. Yeah, I mean, not just uh, Tina Charles, but Nikki and Asiki will be mm-hmm. playing yeah. as well. So um, I'm really excited to be playing with such uh, amazing veterans and um, playing with people I look up to. So I'm really excited. Megan, do you have any last words you want to say to Vol fans? We know you got, you know you're on short for time. You have to get out of here. You want to tell anything to the Vol fans out there? Uh, Vol fans, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate everything that y'all have done for me. Um, I just want to go out there and continue to make y'all proud. I definitely will be back to come visit y'all. Hopefully, I'll be a coach here, you know, at Tennessee. So, thank you guys for everything. We, there you have it, guys. New York Liberty Guard, former Lady Ball great, Megan Simmons. Thank you so much. You're welcome.